any human will have power beyond anything we have ever known. If need be, our food will be light and sound. We'll be able to levitate. We'll live for up to 5,000 years and we'll be telepathic. When this kicks in, it will be quick. The time is near. It's time for you to join the stars. It's time for the bad uh, to leave and the good in humanity to come out. It's time to rise. The woman's weapon. Okay, this is way back in Laredo. <laughs> this is this is an interesting one. I used to belong to uh, uh, something called Amp Guard. Amp Guard, A M P G A R D, and it's out of Laredo, Texas. Um, in Laredo, Texas, uh, it's a lot of heat and a lot of desert, and you get bored easy. So you go out and you try to do cool things. And basically what Amgard is, is you dress up as a character, like in Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, I was, I was really bored. <laughs> and uh, you dress up as like a, a warrior or a, a, a wizard or a, ma a mage or a, a, a monk. Uh, healer, uh, was it a monk? Yeah, you can be a monk and you can be something else. Uh, druid, you can be a variety of characters. You know, an archer. Um, of course, you need a bow for that. But you dress up as that character and you use these foam padded swords and it's very kid friendly. It's there for children mostly. But bigger guys do it because we're really, really bored with our existence. So we try to entertain ourselves and pretend we're something we're not for a while a lot of people and uh, what I've come to understand is that um, it was fun I used to go on my motorcycle because I was still going to college and I'd take my shield on my back and my sword and all that and I'd drive on my motorcycle and people would look at me like well who's this guy think he is but I really believed that I was a knight that I was a, a holy warrior that I was all that and my religion played into that so, basically, I uh, one day or one night before I was making a new weapon that was based on a mace design. It's just like a ball and chain mace. And uh, I made it, and I, I was praying. I had prayed through a little bit. And I had this instinct to look at the weapon and tell the weapon that I want victory tomorrow. So I claimed victory in Jesus' name over my new we my new weapon, and then I went out there the next uh, battle battle game, and I took my little weapon with me, and they were all impressed with it. But they 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 kept calling it a woman's weapon because only women use that because of the style of fighting. It'll basically automatically wrap around shields, so. Basically, they're saying that you're a wimp, that you can't use a sword to wrap around the shield. You have to snap your wrist. So I went ahead and I uh, I took it anyway and I tried it out. I had a shield and I had a mace and I can wrap around their shield. And sure enough, all those guys that were veterans in the game that would always kick my ass and kill me, or most of the time they leave me wounded, they, they sweep one leg and leave me there with one leg so I couldn't do anything. Sometimes it wouldn't give me a honorable death. So <laughs> I went out there and I tried it, and sure enough, I had such a feeling of overwhelming victory that day. I killed every every damn veteran on the opposing team, and the ones that did not die did not die because they ran from me like cowards. And they were all afraid of me. <laughs> I was I was wrapping around their shield. <laughs> I was sweeping their legs and leaving them there. <laughs> they really hated that. And they were all scared. They wanted to, like, uh, use a spear of annihilation to kill me or some shit. Because <laughs> they, couldn't, they couldn't get me with anything else. So they wanted to use that fake magic. <laughs> so, which, uh, it was fun. But this is the lesson in that. If you do pray over your weapon, you get one charge for one battle you get one victory. You try to make that last the next day. I took it in the next day. 
and that weapon fell apart. So I didn't pray over it that night. So if you ever do anything like that, just remember things like that don't always last. It's a temporary fix. So, yeah. I didn't know what I was doing. I was just following my instincts on that one. It was fun, though. They were running. I had never seen them run. <laughs> Those guys always would move forward in battle, and they would always kick everybody's ass. <laughs> they ran like chicken shit. <laughs> <laughs> you got you got to understand the game. It's funny. Anyway, number eight, a girl too young to die. This is basically an uh, intercessory prayer for a beautiful little girl. Her name was Audie, and I prayed for her, and the churches prayed for her. Um, there's at least maybe three churches that prayed for her, at least three, and she had uh, water on the brain which was a, a cyst in between the layers outside the brain of water, had water in there, like pus or something. And she had it, she had it in the, in the x-ray, and then after we got the miracle, because I, I literally did intercessory, intercessory prayer for her, because uh, she is too young to die. She was just a little kid, she deserves to live her life. And I, I stood up and I started rebuking and binding death in Jesus' name, and flew around. I was a saint of the living God. I'm a king priest of heaven. I'm a, I'm a freaking, you know, I'm a, a lord of life. You run from me if you do me wrong, you know. And death, death is supposed to be servant. So I bind him and I rebuke him. And uh, I pray for the little girl. And sure enough, she gets her miracle. All those churches backing me up. Definitely helped. Uh, the Most High went through, and she got a miracle. I don't even know if she's still alive. I lost touch with those people, but she survived that one. And so that's, once again, I'm telling you, you can get your miracle, your magic. You can uh, get those changes in reality, but you got to push yourself. And uh, you push your spirit, and you push the Holy Spirit, and you push the Word of God, and you push everything. Nowadays, I have my own little, my own little book that I write for myself, my own invocations, and uh, mine are designed to try to activate more in me and try to activate it more permanently. And uh, I'm leaning towards that ascension deal that they got going nowadays, but I want to do it right. And that takes a lot of meditation and a good diet and things like that. So anyway, that was another example. She, you know, when you do intercessory prayer, you do it because you love them. You do it because you love them and you care. And because you love them and because you care and because you're asking the deity for help and because other people are asking that deity for help, something's going to happen. So if you're going to throw that ball, be prepared to catch it. And, and that's it. But... Yeah, there's not much else I can say on that. It's pretty straightforward. <coughs> the next one is number nine. Government grant solution. Remember I was telling you that if God gives you an opportunity, you better take it? <laughs> well, I had prayed, and my righteousness in the prayer was this. Because the blood of the Lamb was free, and salvation was free, and everything that is spiritual has a physical type. In other words, uh, a type of the Holy Spirit would be oil or water, uh, maybe even fire in some cases. <laughs> and uh, so there's got to be a spiritual type of having free, the blood of the Lamb, free salvation, free mercy, free compassion, of mercy, of free money, of uh, financial freedom even. And uh, I believe that this righteousness was accepted, that it was processed. And uh, I went to Texas Workforce Commission to uh, look for a job and uh, get on the computer there and all that. At that time, I was unemployed. And I met this gentleman. I have his card somewhere in my stuff. But he... Uh, 
he told me about how to get started with government grants and what to do and all that. But because I was a Christian at the time, I was a, a very conscience, conscious, conscience, conscience-oriented person. Uh, I basically saw that as stealing, and I didn't do it. Even though the Holy Spirit gave me what I asked for, I didn't see it as though I should take that money because it's not. It's free, but it's not for everybody. It's only for certain people, according to the websites. And uh, so I didn't move on that based on a moral or ethical grounds. And I basically did not get any of that money. I didn't apply for it or anything. And it was an opportunity. I mean, the guy even said when he was explaining it to me that uh, he felt the Holy Spirit leading him to do that. So when you sync up and you, you're about to receive the ball, you better catch it. You know, especially if you ask for something to be thrown in your direction. And you have to be careful what you ask for. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's one of my uh, regrets. In either case, <coughs> uh, that is the lesson there. I did get that type of benevolent mercy, freedom, financial freedom. Because uh, in the heavenlies, of course, there's no money. There's which is, let's make another planet with love. You know. <laughs> I just, I just, I'm passing through the baby, and that's all. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, don't drop the ball. <laughs> and don't ask for it if you're not going to pick it up. But either way, that's number nine. That was supernatural. That was in the Holy Spirit, so it qualifies. Uh, number 10, the heart probe in Mexico. I mean, basically, a long time ago when I was younger, we had a sister church, which is a, another Pentecostal church in Mexico, uh, right across the border from Laredo. And it was a small building made out of solid concrete. It was a solid concrete dome. And uh, we went over there and we, we ate some street tacos which are those cheap tacos that they sell. Oh, they were pretty good, actually. Somebody told me they were horsemen. <laughs> but uh, it tastes pretty good. And uh, we went over there, and uh, we started up the service. It wasn't a lot of people. Started up the service, put our hands in the air, and about, I'd say, a minute, minute, minute and a half tops, the Holy Spirit hit me like an anvil would hit you if it fell on you. And it was just like, boom! Now, I didn't physically go down, but in my spirit, I felt it. And it was so powerful in the sense that it was almost as though I was being pushed to the side or opened up the same way you would open up a bag, you know, one of those drawstring bags. You open the string and then you push everything aside to get to the bottom of the bag. And you go to the very bottom of it and you push aside everything else that you don't need in the way. And that's what happened. But it happened in the Holy Spirit. It happened uh, very powerfully. And uh, I got a vision out of that at that time, at that moment. And the vision was this. I was on my knee. I was on one knee down like this. Somebody had my arms twisted so that I was down like this and I couldn't move. I could barely raise my head and I was on one knee. I was dressed in a black robe and Jesus was in front of me dressed in a white robe, a white garment. And uh, nothing was said that I can remember. But when I saw that as a young Christian, I thought, well, I must be evil because I'm in a black robe and Jesus is in a white robe, so Jesus is is a good guy and I'm I'm basically the bad sinner, I'm the evil man. And this is he's just showing me what's in my heart, what I really am. And uh later on, years later now, I know that black is really the universe color, it's the color of the universe and uh just because it's black doesn't mean it's evil. Uh, 
or dark doesn't mean it's really evil. It's there to do certain things and that's it. So it's it's nowhere near what I thought it was when I was a young Christian. I was very naive and very ignorant of anything esoteric or uh, metaphysical. Remember, this is all done in faith. This is all done in faith in the scriptures. It's all done in good faith. So there's no really bad score. There's just, this is for you. This is for you to understand. And things like that, when they penetrate you and they try to see into who you really are, you can take it as, well, this is the sign and this is what I really am, or you can say, no, this is this is possibly what I am, but what I am and who I am is always my choice, not the choice of a vision or the choice of an interaction or an encounter or circumstance. So you either rise above all that or you don't. And, you know, it, it was a very powerful experience. I mean, it hit hard. It was like that was some, one of the most powerful presence of God I've ever had in my life. And so, if you really want to get a good blessing in the Lord, you want to get a good uh, good rain down on you, Mexico is a good place because it was just right across the border and there was no, there was no darkness there. Like over here, you have a kind of darkness that kind of stops you from praying through and reaching the most high. But, over there, it's like there is no resistance for some reason. And it was just across the border. I mean, I was just in a in Laredo versus Nuevo Laredo, which is right across the border. I mean, it wasn't a lot of physical distance at all. It's just miles. So that was a powerful experience, and I would recommend it, if, especially if you're going with a, a missionary or you're going to go do something for the Lord over there. You should try to go and just pray through at the altar and... Uh, because there's no resistance over there. So it's a, it's a good thing. But uh, other than that, you know, that that was a powerful experience, and I can't forget it. So, yeah. But that's that. All that matters is that it keeps going. And it keeps evolving. And it keeps learning to love. And it keeps learning, loving to learn. And it will.